Hi guys, how are you doing? And welcome back. Welcome back to the second video in the hosting my own email server series. In the first video, I showed you guys how I set up a self-hosted mail platform and why I am moving away from big tech Silicon Valley, USA, right? I want to be in control of my emails myself. I want to be in control of that data. Mail is still for me, one of my primary means of communications. And that means I need to make sure that I am in control and that data is secure and stored where I want it. And for me, the logical step there is moving to a self-hosted mail solution and a moving it to a European based provider, right? I can imagine that a lot of you guys want to do the same, move away from big tech USA, move away from the big tech companies in Silicon Valley, move away from, from Google, from Outlook, from Microsoft, but setting up and hosting a own mail platform can be a challenge. I mean, you have to be a little bit technical to understand what is happening and how to set different things up. And of course, for that solution, you can just pick and choose from one of the several hosting providers, the email hosting providers in Europe. There are a lot of good ones. But in this series, I'm going to show you what are the next steps that I'm going to do on my own hosted mail server platform. I chose MailCow to do that. And after setting up the platform, you need to add a domain name and you need to make sure that you're able to accept and deliver emails for that domain name. So those are the first steps. I'm going to show you how I do that on the MailCow platform, on the, on the MailCow software, because that's my mail server of choice now. And I'm also going to show you how to add a account on my iPhone because like I said in the previous video, having ActiveSync doing all the synchronization between my device, my mobile device and my email server, that's a very important step for me. I don't want to have to check my email manually or set up a schedule. It has to be ActiveSync because I like it when ever there is a new email on the mail server, I just get a pop-up, hey, your email is there and that's it. So lots to do in the video. Let's get into it. All right, here we are on MailCow. It is running on that Hetzner VPS. I gave it eight gigabytes of RAM. It is using up a lot of RAM and that's perfectly fine because I wanted to do the spam check and running the rspam daemon in here, it takes up a lot of resources. That's fine. Make sure that you have that uh, set up on your server as well. So the first thing I did, of course, was I went into the configuration and I changed the admin password because standard password of the admin, that's well known in the documentation. You don't want to leave that as is after installing uh, MailCow, change it and make sure it's a very long and complex password. So that's done, right? Now we need to do some other things before we can actually set up our domain in here. One of the things is setting up the DKIM keys for your domain. This is the key for my domain, it will, if you add a domain to MailCow, it will automatically generate this key. Now, if you go to the documentation of MailCow for Hetzner in this case, because my VPS is running on Hetzner, and you can see here, you have to set up the DKIM, right? And it, it's telling you exactly what you need to do. Um, the only thing that we need to do is create a DNS record on my DNS provider and make sure that I copy over this key and paste it in that record. So that's what I did. Let's go quickly to Cloudflare and see what the status is. Of course, I have my MX record set up there, my autoconvig and autodiscover, they are also there. And then I've made up, I made a, I added a TXT record in here and I copy over the content from the, the key actually from uh, my mail server to the content of this TXT record. So this is something you need to do for every domain name you add in your MailCow server. Another thing we will have a quick look at is the fail to ban parameters. So click on options again, then click on fail to ban parameters. I didn't change anything in here because basically these settings are perfectly fine to start off with. If there is something that you feel like you need to change in the future because something is not working according to your expectation, you can do that. Fail to ban is a very, very important part of running and securing your mail platform because this will determine if there are failed logins, how many are there, am I, am I going to block that IP, am I going to block that whole range, for example. 
So this is very important to have up and running because this will protect you from those, for example, brute force attacks or password uh, dictionary attacks, right? So another thing to do here is to make sure that you add your own IP, your internet IP you're getting from your ISP or the network range, if you have that, add it to that whitelist. Because if you don't do that and you're testing from home, for example, and you're reaching one of those, those thresholds here, um, what MailCow will do, it will block you as well, right? Because now you have reached one of those parameters in here. By adding it to your IP to the whitelist, it will make sure that that doesn't happen and then you can keep testing. So make sure that you do that. This is one of the important things, I believe, in setting up and securing your mail server. Another option I also change is the password settings and the complexity. So click on options and let's click on password settings. Now I've already changed this. If you do the out of the box setup, this will be password length for six, I believe, and none of those boxes there are checked. That's something I change immediately as well. I want a length of a, a minimum length of 18 characters and I check all those boxes because that will ensure that if I create a new user here and I generate a password using the password generator built within MailCow, it will generate a very complex password. That's something you want also. Another thing we are going to look at for now, one of the first thing we are going to look at is how are the settings for our spam daemon configured. That setting can be accessed using the access tab and then click on the RSpam the UI. You will see a link here that will bring you to the RSpam the UI. Before you can access that, you have to set a password for the RSpam the UI. I already did that. So if I click on the link, I will get a prompt to log in. And I can see that RSpamD is running and working and doing its thing. It will learn from the way you are, of course, there are spam scores on every mail. It will classify that, but it will also learn from emails you are receiving, you're accepting, you're deleting, you're moving to your junk mail, or even if you're um, rejecting emails. For now, as you can see here, I already done some tests in here and everything is perfectly fine because the mail I sent and received, those were not classified as spam. If you need to change some things here, make sure that you read into the documentation of RSpamD because it can be very complex. And I would say from out of the box, the settings are good enough to start. And um, so don't change anything here if you don't need to, right? You can click on the configuration tab and then you can see all the bells and whistles you can change and even add your own settings if you need to for now. I would leave it at default. Just make sure that it's up and running and it's scanning and learning your email um, behavior. Now we are ready to add our first domain name. So click on email, click on configuration. And as you can see here, I already added a domain name. You can just simply click on add domain, add the domain name you want to add, um, enter the different options in here that you need to change the different options in here that you need to. I would say just start off with the basics. The basics are perfectly fine for getting you up and running unless you know that you immediately want to change some other setting. So that's what I did. I added a domain name. I made sure that I clicked on add domain and restart Sogo because after restarting Sogo, it is aware of that new domain you just added. If you don't do that, Sogo, that's the webmail component. I will show you in a bit. Um, won't be able to um, authenticate you and show you your mailbox. So make sure that you add domain and restart Sogo. If you forget to restart Sogo, you can just do that by clicking on the email um, option uh, in the menu and then click on restart Sogo. It will do exactly the same um, and restart it so it is aware of the new configuration. Now, if I click on edit here, as you can see here, this is my domain name I added here as well. I already did some testing with mails. And if I click on edit, there is nothing special I did here. I just added the mail and made sure that it's active. You can see the DKIM key in here for this domain name. Um, so that's perfectly fine. You have several options in here like rate limiting. I'm not going to mess with that. Spam filtering. Spam filtering is already happening, of course. 
And if I would want to specifically whitelist or blacklist specific domains, I can come in here and do that as an admin. As a user, you have that option in, in here as well. I will show you that in a bit. But nothing I changed in here, of course. Uh, it's just out of the box running up basically in, in with the basic settings. Then I have some other changes and customizations to personalize your mail server. I didn't mess with these settings. It's perfectly fine for now. Now that we've added a domain, the next thing we need to do is create mailboxes. So mailbox is a user. So go to the mailbox tab and click on mailboxes. Now, as you can see here, I already added a mailbox. So what I'm going to do is click on add mailbox. Enter the username. The username is the left part of the domain name. It is addressed here as well. And you, if you have multiple domain names, click on the drop down to select your domain name. I'm doing uh, for my domain name. There are templates in here as well. I'm not going to do that. Now for that password setting that we just changed, this is the option I was talking about. If I'm making a new user and I click on generate password, now it's generating a very complex password, right? So it is 18 characters long and it has all the options in there. So make sure that you go through those changes for the password generation settings and that will make sure that you always have a complex password when creating new mailboxes and new users you can set up another a lot of other settings in here i didn't mess with these and what i ultimately changed in here is let me see nope nothing just added the username full name if that applies and then generate that password and that's it if I click on edit, we can see exactly what's happening here. So this is the YouTube test user I created for this setting. It has a email address, which is ending on that domain. And I didn't change anything in this tab. We can, again, mail cow. It's very extensive with options. If you don't know a option, you can look it up. The documentation is there. The community is very big as well. And you can do a lot of integrations with notification settings. Here you can see that we have pushover integration. If you would want that, you can set up ACLs if you need to, um, rate limiting again, or you can re rename the mailbox. Of course, this is something, uh, think about it before you do it, because then the user or that mailbox is gone. So those are the settings we need to run through when adding a new user nothing special just keep it with the basic settings and you should be good to go so for that user let's log in actually you can see here it's the the domain name of your server and then slash sogo that's what you're going to do and let's click on that and let's copy over the username here as well and then the password also and let's click on let me change this to English for a second. Username and then add the password. Here we go. And this is the Sogo interface. You can see here I have a test email running uh, from my uh, email address. So that's fine. It is working fine. That's what I wanted to check. But Sogo is, of course, familiar if you are using, um, if you have used collaboration platforms like Outlook or Gmail or other clients which have calendar and contacts integrated in here, right? So if I click on calendar, I have the calendar. If I click on contacts, I can add contacts in here and then I can go back to the mail. So the nice thing is that everything that you change in here, if you, for example, add a mailbox in here, it will appear on your phones or your devices which are being synced with that active sync um, communication that, that active sync protocol because that's what sogo is doing it is emulating that active sync protocol so this is something very nice to have because if you need to use webmail webmail is there and um, it is pretty familiar and easy to work with now something to remember as a user if you click on the wrench here on the top right corner you would think that it will take you to the settings of sogo that's not the case this will take you to the mail cow preferences this is giving me a little pop-up when i hover over it on with my mouse if you want to go to the sogo settings for your user we have to click on that cog here on the left side um, behind your e or your name so if we click on that those are the preferences for sogo 
and if we click on the wrench icon we are getting back to the well the the so-called admin interface for that specific user because now this user is able to um, set specific settings for their own mailbox in the admin option you can see here that we are in the user settings the user has the option to see if there are emails in quarantine or not and if there are if the user want to change the password for example or set up other temporary email aliases check the spam filter rules and set it up accordingly um, create app passwords for example uh, that's something you would uh, do if you have multiple uh, authentication factors for your user and then you want an app password for maybe a specific application uh, which will then bypass that multi-factor authentication that's something the user can set up as well so again there is a lot of settings the user can do from the admin perspective in MailCow, but also from the sogo perspective so if we want to go back to sogo we can just click on app on webmail or in the mailbox in the general tab if we click on mail webmail it will bring you back to the sogo interface and this this is the interface a user will be using most of the time to be honest so let's look at the iphone if i want to add that here let's copy over that email address real quick paste it over and we will say that this is just for youtube testing next today we will configure it manually and of course it says I can't verify the server identity because there is a mismatch between the autoconfig.vcache.video and the actual DNS name of the mail server. And that's where, where the Let's Encrypt certificate differentiates. Nothing to worry about. You have to make sure that the actual DNS name your mail server has, that uh, your Let's Encrypt certificate and that domain is being added to that mail server so it can generate the Let's Encrypt certificate with the correct domain name. That's the only thing you have to worry about. This is just a test. So that's why this is happening here. So we'll say continue. It wants to have the password. Let's copy over that password real quick. Let's click on next. And as you can see here, it has authenticated us and it is presenting all the collaboration options for mail, for contact, calendar, reminder, and notes, because that's being uh, presented by the Sogo ActiveSync protocol. So let's click on save. And now we have added our mail on the iPhone as well. And here are the steps for actually setting up your first domain name on that MailCow platform. As you saw in the video, there is a mismatch between the test domain name I'm using on MailCow and that actual domain name uh, with the host name of the server. Of course, I'm going to change that in a production environment when I migrate my primary mail domain to my MailCow platform. In that video, I will show you how I do it and how I migrate my mails from Apple iCloud Plus to my own mail server because MailCow has a very handy feature in there which will synchronize your mailbox from another mail provider, another mailbox, and making sure that all your mail are being migrated. So, but that's for the next video for now. Thank you for watching. As always, don't forget to click on the like and subscribe buttons below. For comments, leave them in the comment section below. I'll try to get to them as soon as possible. For now, take care and see you in the next video. Bye.